The FBI in peace and war, usually heard at this time throughout the year, is taking its summer vacation. The FBI in peace and war will return to CBS six weeks from now, August 31st. Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. We take you now to the lineup. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Hardesty. I just don't want anything to happen to me. I've got a family. Just and... identify the man you saw holding the gun. We'll see that nothing happens to you. Sit down. Yes. Gangsters. I should never have taken that job as janitor there in the first place. A suite of offices. <laughs> a nest for gangsters. You should have thought about that. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire, may I have your attention, please? <laughs> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of the line, when I call for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. I don't like this, Luton. I'm worried. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the bathroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back here after they leave. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. This way, boys, right down the stage. You, the front man, walk to the end of it, take your place. The rest follow. Turn around and face front. Hands by your sides. Look straight ahead so the people out there can see you. Number one, John Meston, vacancy. Where do you live, John? House on 69th Street. I know that, but what number? Ain't no number. One with a flag and one not. All right. What were you doing when the officer arrested you? I was in a barrel. What were you doing in a barrel? Nothing, Lieutenant. When things get going bad, I... Find me a barrel, and I sit in it until I feel better. Anything wrong with that? Number two, Lee Dahlgren, carrying concealed weapons. Where do you live, Lee? Blue Point Hill, 1256 Park Boulevard. That's a pretty tony place, Lee. What were you doing on Skid Row with the Luger? Walking. Where'd you get the Luger? It's not mine. It's my wife. Where'd she get it? I was going to ask her today where she got it. Number three, Aram Kujaran. Theft. Where do you live, Aram? Uratu, Armenia. Armenia, what are you doing here? Getting ready to go back to Uratu, uh, Armenia. What were you doing when the officer arrested you? Practicing my profession like so I had in Uratu, uh, Armenia. What's your profession, Aaron? Big pocket. Number four, Eddie Gaynor, suspicion of murder. Where do you live? Wherever you led me. Uh, uh, number four. Mr. Harris. Uh, uh, number four. All right, Sergeant. Uh, turn sideways, Eddie. Okay. This is sad. Again, so your back is to the audience. Again, sideways. Front, Eddie. Is this man identified? How about it, Mr. Hardesty? Uh, number four. Town, aren't you, Eddie? I wouldn't say so. I already feel like I was born here, lived here, died here. When did you get in? Two days ago. It's a frame. I didn't kill him. Maybe I should never come. Huh? From where? Long Ridge. It's in Illinois. It's where Chicago dumps its garbage. Why did you leave it? I told you. I wanted to better myself. Live like real people live. Especially rich people. What do you do, Eddie? Come again. I mean, what's your work, your profession? How do you make a living? Oh, that. I steal, beat up on a week. The price is right, I'll kill. There are other ways to make a living. Johnny Taranto was a big man in our town. The price for killing him must have been high. Who 
paid you to kill him, any? No, buddy. Because I didn't kill Johnny Durano. Why should I kill him? I needed him. For what? For what I said to better myself. Johnny was big. He was a hoodlum, a gangster. Like I said, like you said, he was big. Good connections. When I get to town, the wind whispers in my ear, Johnny Taranto. With Johnny, it'll be good. I don't kill what's good for me. How does the janitor, the man who identified you, said he heard shots early this morning while he was cleaning up. Saw you running out of Johnny's office with a gun in your hand. Found Johnny with bullet holes in him. Just like I found him. Tell me how it was. It'll do good. Tell me. Walking down the hall of Johnny's office, I hear shots. Quick, I run in. Johnny slumped over his desk. He's dead with his head on his penny bank. I reach for my gun. I don't have it. Oh? I don't have it because my gun got there ahead of me. It's on the floor at Johnny's feet. My gun. And they timed it perfect. They knew I had an appointment with him at 2 o'clock in the morning. Why didn't you leave it alone? Why'd you pick up your gun? Why did you run? <laughs> you must be kidding. You must be making big ha-ha jokes with me, huh? Why does a guy like me run? Who arranged your appointment with Toronto? Something who sells perfume, cologne, things like that. Ruby Lloyd? Yeah, yeah. Ruby. Never saw him before in my life. About five o'clock, he picks me up at the pool room where I've been hanging out. In this big car. Takes me to a store, sells me a fifth of November afternoon. Tells me I got an appointment with Johnny. What more could a guy ask? Between five and... Two in the morning. Where were you? With a girl. I'll give you her name free. Because she was in on the frame. Jenny Breen. At the free smile counter in Mickey's bar in Maine. How were you framed, Eddie? Tell me. Jenny takes me home with her because she sees I'm a stranger in town. We talk, she sings me a lullaby. I fall asleep. Five to two, she wakes me, pushes me out the door. I shouldn't be late for my appointment with Toronto. I don't even have time to notice my gun is gone. I figured him... You got a date, Eddie. You got a date to die because you murdered What have you got, man? A report from ballistics. The bullet in Toronto's body came from Eddie's gun here. <laughs> yeah, what a pretty, pretty frame. You boys and go petty player. Now your day's work's done. Maybe, Eddie. I'll go make sure... Lock him up, man. You drinking what, mister? Scotch. Johnny Walker. Scotch. Thanks. Well, you asked for it, you got it. Makes me nervous when a guy just stares at his scotch. Oh, it's lonesome, huh? A scotch stare with a burden, huh? We provide, mister. Yeah. Friend told me. You see, a friend told you. Our hostesses bring a smile, mister. Uh, what'd your friend tell you? Jenny. Uh, he told you good. Jenny! Hey, 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 Jenny! A friend told this lonesome man there was a girl, Jenny, here. Hello. He poured that drink for you, Jenny. Uh-huh. Well, try a keg. Enjoy each other. Yell loud and clear when you want more. I said hello. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think of a clever answer. Forget it. I was just thinking, Forget Jenny. that, too. Still a young evening. Uh, give me a nickel, huh? All right. Here. What'd your friend say about me? That you're nice to talk to? He was in last night. Mm, it's a good song. It's a real good song. Last night he came in feeling unhappy. He said, Jenny, listen to him. What line of work are you in, mister? Oh, you call it public relations? Fancy. I like things made out of silk. Did your friend tell you that? He said he went home with you. Last night? Mm-hmm. Last night. That's what Eddie said. 
You know why you're not drinking your drink? Because you're a cop on duty who's not drinking on duty. What happened last night, Mac? Mac, come here. What happened to me last night, Mac? Oh, what happened to you last night? You were here till 3 in the a.m. I took you home. Had my eye on you all last night, Jenny. Goodbye, cop. time. I was just going to close up. Hi, right, Ruby. What's the matter, Ben? You're going out and you need to smell good? I got some English cologne on sale. It'll make you smell like a dove. <laughs> Come on in. I locked the door because if another customer came in, I'd be rude to him. I'm that tired. Well, what can I show you, Ben? It's always such a pleasure to wait on you. You stayed open today, huh, Ruby? I shouldn't have done that. Should have stayed home and saw the black band on my sleeve, huh? Yeah, but I've got a sale going on. It's been advertised in the press and radio and TV. Oh, I couldn't disappoint my client. Johnny Taranto might have been disappointed. Oh, Johnny might have been at that. In many ways, he was a sensitive man. You know, Ben, I've been so engrossed in this sale, I didn't even think of it in that way. Oh, forgive me, Johnny. That's all Johnny's death means to companion as number one errand boy. Well, at the funeral, I'll be his number one mourner. Oh, why you pry into my emotions, Ben? Where were you last night, Ruby? Around two o'clock, say. Well, with my wife at home. I couldn't sleep, so my wife played hearts with me. You can check that with her maid. She let us use her cards. I don't keep a pack in the house, you know. With Johnny Taranto dead, the syndicate could crown you king in this town, couldn't it, Ruby? Oh, it could, but I gave up all that years ago, as everyone knew, even Johnny. <laughs> you know, in my heart, I hate perfume. What did you promise Eddie for the job? Eddie gave me? Well, you think I hired him to kill Johnny? Well, it could work out good for you that way. You get rid of Johnny, frame the kid, retire from toilet water. If I weren't so exhausted, Ben, I'd be angry with you. Well, look, it was like this. Word comes to me a kid from out of town wants to contact Johnny. I'm a friend of man, so I arrange to meet him. How do I know the kid is unstable and will throw bullets like stones into Johnny's face? Oh, here, I'll let you out, Ben. I'll manage. Don't take your wife away for a vacation, Ruby. We'd miss you both. Just got a call, Lieutenant Homicide. Where, Friday? Alley between Maple and Truce, 23rd Street, three blocks away. Red light, siren. Let's go. Yeah. I guess down here, Lieutenant. Identification a little tough. No. I know who she is. Huh? A girl who liked hillbilly music. In the bar? Yeah. Call them all, Party. Tell them to come to an alley and pick up Ginny Breen. Behind the scenes at police headquarters as we bring you the lineup. It's not only murder in an antique shop. It's murder by an antique method which faces Mr. Keene when he comes to CBS again tonight. This time, the famed tracer of lost persons investigates the death of a man who owns an old curiosity shop and who has been murdered by one of his items of merchandise, an antique battle axe. Join Mr. Keene just a little later tonight on most of these same CBS stations for Murder in the Old Curiosity Shop. And now, we return you to The Lineup. Ben. Uh, yes, Mr. 
Yeah, Matt, come in. Going home? I guess, I don't know. Well, let me know. I want to lift. Two in the morning's long enough to work. I need the bed. Uh, me too. What's worrying you, Ben? A gang killing? You've been through it before. Sometimes we come up with a killer, sometimes no. So? So you sleep on it. As simple as that, eh? Simpler. A young hooligan comes to town, knocks over Johnny Taranto. What's company? I know, I know. So you sleep on it. Matt. You're still trying to alibi Eddie Gaynor? He said he was framed. A young hood, his gun at the scene of the crime. Oh, don't get philosophical about a punk like that. Why was Ginny Breen killed, Matt? A hanger on. She rubbed noses with hooligans. She could have come to me five years ago and I would have told her what happened. Maybe I couldn't have said what alley, but there would have been an alley in it. We've got to find out who killed him, Matt. We will. And who killed Johnny Toronto? Eddie Gaynor. I don't know. I really don't know, Matt. How can you not know? Taranto runs everything in this town that's got a fast dollar strung to it. He buys lots with these fast dollars, most anything he wants. Let's not kid ourselves. Taranto owns his part of this town. Someone wants it, hires Eddie Gaynor to kill him. Let's not kid each other, Ben. I'll drop you off, Matt. Such late hours, you boys, Keith. Uh, What's on your mind, Tobin? What's on my mind, he says. What's on a lawyer's mind at a time like this? In a place like this? With boys like you? Stop jingling those coins, Tobin. All right. What's on your mind? Read it. Read it and pop a tear. A writ. Habeas corpus, boys. Release Eddie Gaynor. Writ says so. I'll wait for him at the desk. Sleep well. What stupid... I'll go on with your education, Ben. Eddie Gaynor's just been sprung. People with connections... Don't say it, don't say it. Come on, I'll take you home. Like he was admiring the dashboard of this luxurious bargain in a used car. I hallowed him, went into my speed. You couldn't tell he was dead? Well, now, I tell you, Mr. Guthrie, some of the suckers I get in here, it's hard to tell. But this one looks so sold. I thought he was alive and intelligent. Why, I even handed him my ballpoint fountain pen. This man's Eddie Gaynor. Why didn't you call the police? Well, finding a dead man all shot up in one of your better used car bargains that... Takes a little mulling over, friend. After I mulled, I was going to call you for sure. Honest. Uh, you say this man's Eddie Gaynor I've been reading about in the paper? Well, what do you know? <laughs> well, what do you know about that? Yes, what is it, Bernie? That lawyer, Tobin. We still haven't been able to find him. Still can't understand why he should take off like he did. Lose himself. A client of his was found murdered in a used car lot. Maybe, maybe Tobin was ashamed. or Maybe he heard we'd want to question him. Yeah, but a big criminal lawyer like that? Uh, maybe something will come up. Keep looking. I've got to make this line up. Yes, sir. And what did you say? 
you say to the officer, Lee? I didn't know he was an officer. What'd you say to him? Just did he want to see the sights of the city, tour of the spot, have a good time, you know. Number 26, Mooney Roger, purse snatching. Where do you live, Mooney? Turn down. I believe that's the man, Sergeant. I believe that's the man, Sergeant. Yes, yes, I'm sure of it. Sergeant Graham. Yes, Lieutenant. Send that man to my office for interrogation. The woman, too. Right. <laughs> No, oh, come in, Florence. Sit down. Mooney will be here in a minute. Do I look awful? These clothes fit me like a bag. <laughs> oh, I can't help it, Lieutenant. I felt conspicuous all during that lineup. Oh, it'll pass. You're getting to be a good policewoman, Florence. I did good. I did good, huh? You did, Mooney? Just fine. <laughs> I, I want to tell you, miss, when you're off duty, not being a policewoman, hold on to your purse tighter. There's guys like me for real on the streetcars. What have you got, Mooney? I'm a good stoolie, huh? Yes, I told you. The lady, the miss, does she think... Moni, you're a good stoolie. Yeah. <laughs> it's clever the way I arrange for the cops to pick me up so the boys won't know my true profession, so I can stay alive. So much shooting lately. Yeah. What have you got? You're looking for a lawyer, Tobin. Mm-hmm. I, uh, got a friend. Runs the Ferris wheel at the Bay Shore Park. He's got a little room underneath the hotel. There, huh? You might try there, Lieutenant. Once Tobin did my friend a big favor. Larceny rap. You might try there. You're a good stoolie, Mooney. <laughs> yeah. You're not a welcome sight to me, boys. You won't mind my saying it right to your faces. Ah, oh, Tobin, that hurts. Haven't we always cooperated with you? You walk in jingling coins, you ask us to release a boy. We release him just because you ask us. You have to be glad to see it. Sure, Tobin. We made it so easy for Eddie Gaynor to get killed, we thought you'd want to thank us. That's why we looked you up. I had nothing to do with killing that boy. Absolutely nothing. Quite the reverse. Reverse? That means you were trying to save his life. Is that what it means, Tobin? Well, answer me. It must mean something else, huh, Ben? You're wasting your time, boys. I studied the law real hard. That's why I know about things like this. How policemen can waste time. Where did it get you, studying hard? You've got a mansion, a three-car garage, servants to feed you, press your pants, and you end up under a Ferris wheel. Maybe it's this, Matt. Maybe it's just that he likes to hide under a Ferris wheel. Other people ride, he hides. It's just like you say, boy. But there's one thing we don't understand, Tobin. Why do you like to hide? If you're all clear, like you say, what's the need? I forgot. Maybe you thought no one would notice how Eddie was killed. How you got him out on a writ so he could be killed. I forgot. But at headquarters, you'll remember, eh, Tobin? So fix the crease in your pants and let's go. Yeah, come on, let's go. How can you stand the noise of that wheel going round and round over your head, huh? thing like that could drive a man bats. Uh, put the loose change in your pocket, Tobin. It'll get in the way of the cuffs. You're making a big mistake, boys. But we'll live. People like you make a mistake and you die. That's the difference between us. There's one other thing we don't understand, Tobin. Eddie Gaynor was almost sure to be executed. Why did the syndicate have him released? Wouldn't it have been cheaper to let the state kill Eddie for him? The uh, cuffs too tight, Tobin? I'll make a deal with you, boys. You know better. No deal. I'll offer it anyway. You can consider it. There's no law says you can't consider it. So? You said a man like me makes a mistake, he gets killed. You were so right, you don't know. Riddles, Tobin. All I want for what I give you is protection. You've got to promise you'll do your best to keep me from getting murdered. What have you got to give? I was Johnny Toronto's friend. I tried to make something up to him. I didn't want him dead. Who did? There's the promise. All right, kind heart, I'll tell you anyway. Eddie Gaynor was framed because someone wanted Johnny dead. Johnny was killed, and Eddie was a perfect pigeon. It was my own idea to get Eddie released. I thought Johnny would like that, for me to use this someone's pigeon to avenge Johnny's death. This someone killed Johnny. Who? Ruby Lloyd. And the girl? Ruby Lloyd. And Eddie? Ruby Lloyd. He'd kill me, too, if he could find me. Prove it to us, Tobin. How? We'll get you to the phone. You'll call Ruby. Tell him he doesn't have to look for you anymore. 
You'll be at Toronto's office in an hour. You don't believe me, huh? You'll protect me? If we have to. You'll have to. You sure you'll be all right, Ben? Oh, I like it here, Matt. I like Toronto's swivel chair. No squeaks. Air foam. It's got a rich feel about it. How do you open a penny bank? Hmm? In Toronto's penny bank, how do you... Oh, never mind. I got it. I don't get it. I thought I was going to be... The pigeon? Uh-uh. Look, Ben, what do you want to be, a hero? Ruby Lloyd expects to meet Tobin here, doesn't he? I just want to surprise him. I didn't realize that you Take boys... him out of here, man. Hold him on a... Well, he'll tell you what to hold him on. An open charge will make it. Take me away, officer. You sure, Ben? On your way out, turn out the lights. All right. See you, Ben. Tobin. Tobin? You here? Did I scare the pennies out of your hand, Tobin? Did I hurt you bad? I only want to kill you. That's for getting Eddie Gina released. That's for getting away the first time. That's to make sure you don't get away again. Drop it, Ruby. Yeah, huh? Drop it. You're covered. Prove it to me. I've got you covered, Ruby. Behind you. If you don't believe, look over your shoulder. All right. Three murders. But then you can only die once. Now, huh, Ruby? Let's go. Lineup was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and stars William Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb. Music was composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Howard McNear, Junius Matthews, Edgar Barrier, Anthony Barrett, Paul Fries, and Clayton Post. The mysterious death of a man in Philadelphia in April of this year will be the unsolved murder case presented on CBS new anti-crime show, Somebody Knows, tonight. And after the facts are presented, $5,000 reward will be offered again for clues you may have leading to arrest and conviction of the killer. Somebody Knows, a vital clue which has not yet come to light when these taken-from-life cases are presented each Thursday on most of these same CBS stations. Somebody Knows will be along just a little later tonight on CBS. This is CBS, where crime photographer solves the case on Thursday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.